We did some nuclear testing on this date. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is March 1st, 2024. It is the 61st day of the year. There are 305 days left. It is the ninth Friday in the ninth week and the 72nd day of winter. You got 18 days left until spring. Today's National Denim Day. Denim Day for dementia is an annual celebration on the first Friday of March, and this year it falls on March 1st. Founded by the Alzheimer's Society of Ireland, the holiday aims to help raise funds for those with dementia. The condition that affects a person's memory, cognitive function, thought processing, social skills, and emotions. I like how they tied in denim with it just because it sounds like, you know, the beginning of dementia. Oh well, I've seen worse holidays. All right. Let's see what else March 1st has given us. 1781, the Articles of Confederation go into effect in the United States. The Articles of Confederation, formerly known as the Articles of Confederation and Perpetual Union, was the first constitution of the United States, which was ratified in 1781, following the Declaration of Independence in 1776. This document laid the groundwork for the national government of the newly independent states, emphasized state sovereignty, and limiting the power of the central government. The Articles of Confederation represent a crucial role in American history, illustrating the fledgling nation's initial attempt to define its governance structure amidst the challenges of unification and the desire for independence from a centralized authority. Okay, so what's the backstory to this? Back when the American Revolution was kicking off, a bunch of folks from the Second Continental Congress with John Dickerson steering the ship got together to draft these articles. They started in 1776, but it wasn't until 1781 that all 13 states finally agreed on it. We only had 13 states at the time. What was the big holdup? A squabble over who gets the land west of the Appalachians which got sorted out once the states agreed to let the central government handle it. Now, they were arguing about this, and this was a serious problem. What were the articles all about? The articles basically said, let's team up for defense, freedom, and welfare, but let's also keep our distance. The central government would handle stuff like talking to other countries, declaring war, and managing the mail, but it couldn't ask for taxes manage trade between states, and make laws that directly affected the people. This made it pretty weak sauce when getting things done. And when it came to making decisions, it was all about a one-house Congress where every state, big or small, got just one vote. Fair? Not really. Maybe. A little bit. But also, it was a recipe for deadlock, since changing anything major needed everyone to agree, which, as you can guess, was a pretty tall order. The shortcomings of the Article of Confederation became increasingly evident in the years following the end of the Revolutionary War, culminating in events such as the Shea Rebellion in 1786 and 1787. This uprising underscored the national government's inability to maintain order and economic stability, galvanizing calls for a stronger central authority. The Articles of Confederation hold a critical place in American history as the nation's first attempt to create a unified government structure, while ultimately replaced by the Constitution due to its significant limitations. The Articles underscored the foundational American values of state sovereignty and limited central authority. Obviously, the Constitution was a better piece of paper because we still follow it to this day. 1910, the deadliest avalanche in United States history buries the Great North Railway train in northeast King County, Washington, killing 96 people. 1917, the Zimmerman Telegram was reprinted in a newspaper across the United States as the U.S. government releases the unencrypted text. 1950, war nuclear weapon testing. The Castle Bravo, a 15 megaton hydrogen bomb, is detonated on Bikini Atoll or Atoll, in the Pacific Ocean, resulting in the worst radioactive contamination ever caused by the United States. 1978, the Watergate scandal. Seven are indicted for their role in the Watergate break-in and charged with conspiracy to obstruct justice. 2007, tornadoes break out across the southern United States, killing at least 20 people, including eight at Enterprise High School in Enterprise, Alabama. Movies released on March 1st, 2024, Dune, part two. Uh, yeah, I'm going to watch it. I really wasn't as impressed with Dune number one, uh, the old one in the 80s. I'd love that one. The one that they had out a couple of years ago. I wasn't that impressed. A lot of people loved it. And I think I'm on the outside on this one. So I'm going to have to watch number two, see if it gets a little better. This is a science fiction epic that serves as the continuation of 2021's Dune, 
The film was originally slated to be released in October of 2023, but it was pushed back due to an industry work stoppage. Born on March 1st, 1954, Ron Howard. Director, producer, and actor who first became known as Andy Griffin's son, Opie, on The Andy Griffin Show, and also played teenager Richie Cunningham in Happy Days. His 2001 film, A Beautiful Mind, received an Academy Award for Best Picture and earned Howard an Academy Award for Best Director. He also directed films like Apollo 13, Dr. Seuss, How the Grinch Stole Christmas... He also did The Da Vinci Code, Frost Nixon, Cinderella Man, which was excellent, Angels and Demons, Ransom, which was pretty good, Far and Away, I like that, Backdraft, and Parenthood. One other one he did, which was a great movie, Splash. I love that movie. Died on March 1st, 1988, Joe Besser, comedian best known for his short-lived role as a member of the Three Stooges in 1949. He appeared in Abbott Costello's movie, African Screams. He grew up with one older brother and seven older sisters, and he entered the realm of comedy at age 12. He was a voice actor who did many of the roles in Looney Tune cartoons, and he was also on the Joey Bishop show many times. He took the place of Shemp Howard, who was Shemp when Curly couldn't do it anymore. Shemp took over, and then Shemp passed away, and they got Joe Besser. Joe Besser died of heart failure on March 1st, 1988, at the age of 80. His wife, Edna, died on July 1st, 1989. They are both interned at Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Glendale, California. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, be nice to each other.